Look at this little beard. Look how long it's got. I will give it a shave. Welcome back to the channel's pickles. My name is Stephen Hussey. I have a PhD in philosophy and here we talk about the three R's, reading, writing, and rationality. Don't check the spelling on those. Today, I wanna to talk about seven books that have inspired my creativity and hopefully will inspire yours. And I'm just gonna give you the big macro lessons that I've learned from these, how I kind of use these to fuel myself when I'm doing creative work. Number one is Daily Rituals by Mason Curry. And this one is just super practical and its subtitle is How Great Minds Make Time, Find Inspiration and Get to Work. And the meta lesson of this entire book, it just goes through writers and artists and philosophers and talks about their work schedule, how they actually set up their day. So the meta lesson is just that routines matter, your habits matter, what you do every day is a part of your creativity. It doesn't, inspiration doesn't just come. Nearly everyone who produced interesting or great work had habits, they were thoughtful about how they structured their time for creativity. And the good lesson you learn from that book is there is no one way to do it. Some people are morning people, some people are night workers. The only important thing is you allocate the time and decide how you're gonna set up your day so that you get your deep work in. Okay, number two, and this is a strange one, I guess, but it's a music biography of the Beatles called Dreaming the Beatles. Now, I tend to not really like books about musicians and bands. Uh, I tend to just find them tedious. I'm not usually that interested in a band story, but. I mean, obviously, I love the Beatles. Uh, I'm constantly bowled over by the wave of creativity they produced over a period of about seven years in which they produced 12 major studio albums and each one of them evolved to a more interesting place than the last one. And just to put it in perspective, how the hell do you go from 1963 to 1970, starting at Please Please Me, getting to Revolver, getting to the White Album, and then to Let It Be, all in the space of seven years? It's mental. This book kind of doesn't just tell the story of the Beatles, it really looks into the dynamics of the band's creativity and what made them work so well. And to me, it emphasized the importance of collaboration, um, the importance of having a serious work ethic to keep reinventing yourself, to keep learning and trying, you know, to push the boundaries of where you went before. And, you know, there's different characters in here. Obviously, John is the more like dreamy one and Paul is the workhorse who's always like pushing for the next thing. But you just see the importance of having complementary characteristics either in yourself or in the people you surround yourself with and the importance of teams and management to producing your creative work. So very, very good book, Dreaming the Beatles. It's great, I really recommend it. Okay, number three is beloved by many writers and artists and that is Anne Lamott's Bird by Bird. Now, this one is quite writing centric, but really it's a guide to uh, what it takes to have an artistically fulfilling life and how to get out of your own limited mindsets, uh, your self-defeating voice inside your head, the thing that makes you stifled, holds you back, the kind of traps that artists can fall into. And it shares real vulnerability, real personal stories. And, you know, Anne Lamott is a joy to read anyway. Her prose is fantastic, but if you've ever struggled with the process of actually going from blank page to creating something, this book will make you feel like you have a friend in the process and it's just full of timeless wisdom and she really gives you permission to just, you know, write shitty first drafts. That's one of her kind of major tenets and as long as you have a shitty first draft, you have something you can work with and make better and she just basically gives you permission to be able to get the work out of yourself, to trust yourself, to have faith that what you have is worth saying. Um, so really, really great book for the emotional side of things. It really pushes you uh, to do your best work and I really love it. Okay, number four is a novel actually. Um, and it's a novel that was an enormous phenomenon in the literary world and that is Carl Ove Knausgaard's second book in his My Struggle series called A Man in Love. So if you don't know, the My Struggle series is basically, it was, you know, Knausgaard had been called the Norwegian Proust. He wrote six volumes about his own life, essentially, kind of fictionalized, and it upset many people in his life because of the way he portrayed them, but it's searingly honest. And although it's, 
it's not a book about creativity. Well, it is a book about someone struggling to be a writer, but it's not a guide for people. It's a, it's a work of uh, fiction, but it really, it, it shows you a man struggling with the demands of domesticity and falling in love with his wife and having a child and living in this country where he, you know, he's not from. And it's kind of all his daily struggles, but with the additional struggle of him desperately trying to carve out a place in the world as an artist, as a writer. And um, it's not it's not just that struggle that kind of inspires me, but more the actual, um, the actual writing itself, showing that even just the, you know, you can make just your life interesting. If you write about it honestly enough, vulnerable enough, if you are willing to commit and open yourself, like bleed on the page, as they say, uh, this just is someone really nakedly putting themselves out there on the page. And it just, it just reads like, oh, there it is. It's so simple. You just, you just do that and you have a book. Uh, obviously it takes a hell of a lot of, uh, you know, the brilliant craft that Kanausgaard puts into his books, but um, it's just my favorite one of that series. If you don't want to read six volumes, uh, just pick up this one, A Man in Love. I think it's a great, great book and uh, inspiring uh, in its own way. Number five is Range by David Epstein, How Generalists Can Triumph in a Specialized World. And this really goes counter to the argument. I think I used to feel so much guilt about not being a single-minded specialist because we heard of that Anders Ericsson idea, the 10,000 hour rule and applying yourself 10,000 hours in one area to become an expert. And this book really kind of disputes that and takes issue with it and shows through many fascinating uh, data and examples how generalists can actually, have actually contributed enormous amounts. People who use different disciplines and bring them together have brought enormous creativity, insights, Nobel prizes, all these fascinating things, um, and it's often people who are multidisciplinary. And so this book just kind of inspired me to be happy to go off on tangents, learning about different things, following my curiosity where it leads, and not feeling chained and pressured to always just be thinking about one singular topic or one singular art, and that's all you can do. So yeah, I found this very powerful um, in just inspiring me to be okay with being more of a generalist. Okay, the sixth book is by Stephen Pressfield, which is the book The War of Art, which is not the book I have in my hand. The book I have in my hand is his other book, Turning Pro. The War of Art I actually have on Kindle, but here's a little picture of it for you. The thing about these books is, and specifically The War of Art, but they talk about the same idea, which is that you cannot rely on inspiration. You have to decide to not be an amateur and to be a professional. And the professional shows up for work every day. They sit their butt in the chair. They fight against what he calls the resistance, the force that is always trying to overcome you of self-doubt, of fear, of feeling like you are not up to the job, that you're a fraud. You have to overcome that. You have to push through the resistance. You have to realize it's a lie and that if you want to create something amazing or just any important work, you are going to have to overcome that resistance. And that, as this book says, turning pro is a decision. It's a decision to stop behaving like an amateur who just does it when they feel like it, is just led by their transient feelings and to decide, no, I'm gonna be a professional, I'm gonna do the work, I'm gonna ship it, and I'm gonna show up so that the muse can actually show up to. Number seven is certainly not a personal development book. It is the masterpiece Ulysses by James Joyce. Now, this is a book I would only recommend to people who are really wanting to roll up their sleeves and have something heavily literary. It is not an easy read. It is about eight or 900 pages. It is a doorstop. Um, and it's a story of Leopold Bloom and his friend Stephen, and it's all set in one day in Dublin. Um, but what I love about this book is it shows the infinite possibilities of what you can do with language. There's entire chapters that are just inside characters' heads, and you hear the different ways they think, and um, it's full of literary allusions. It's, you know, it's a difficult work, uh, one that gives you, like all the great classics, it, it's gives you a ton of reward for your investment, but you kind of have to be willing to go down the rabbit hole and invest in it. But 
yeah, this book just showed to me what you can do with the novel, the power of literature to do something completely different and modern and completely flip your ideas of what's possible with language. Uh, so yeah, that's very personal to me, but it's kind of this totemic book for me of just showing, man, you can really do something entirely fresh just with words on the page and, you know, it's a, it's a masterpiece. So, Ulysses by James Joyce. That is it from me. Uh, thank you so much. Let me know the books that inspire your creativity in the comments below. And if you like videos like these, let me know and I'll do some more of them. Maybe I'll do a part two to this. Maybe we'll talk about other books that can do other things for you. Um, all right, that is it from me, Pickles. I'll see you soon.